Without even noticing it, chances are you followed some bizarre vintage traditions without even knowing their meanings. Some traditions pop up around the holidays, like kissing under the mistletoe. Some of them happen every day, like making a wish on an eyelash. But no matter how well known the tradition, few people really know the true meaning behind these unusual and sometimes superstitious little customs. They are practiced to remind us of our history and passed down from generation to generation. Some traditions are widespread and adopted by one and all, like celebrating Christmas and birthdays. And then there are some that are quite strange or interesting and practiced only by a niche group of people. Here are some interesting traditions from all over the world. Number one. Hanami is the Japanese tradition of appreciating the transient beauty of flowers, and especially of blossoming cherry trees. From the end of March to early May, cherry trees bloom all over Japan, and around the 1st of February on the island of Okinawa. The practice of Hanami is many centuries old. The custom is said to have started during the Nara period. The custom was originally limited to the elite of the imperial court, but soon spread to samurai society, and by the Edo period, to the common people as well. Tokugawa Yushimun planted areas of cherry blossom trees to encourage this. Under the Sakura trees, people had lunch and drank sake in cheerful feasts. Today, the Japanese people continue the tradition of Hanami, gathering in great numbers wherever the flowing trees are found. Thousands of people fill the parks to hold feasts under flowering trees, and sometimes these parties go on until late at night. These can take the form of family picnics and work outings, or nighttime parties with friends. In some parks, paper lanterns or even decorative electrical lanterns are hung from the trees, and many local springtime festivals known as Matsuri accompany the event. In more than half of Japan, the cherry blossoming days come at the same time as the beginning of school and work after vacation, and so welcoming parties are often opened with hanami. Number two, blowing out birthday candles. It can be traced back to the ancient Greeks, who often burned candles as offerings to their many gods and goddesses. For the ancient Greeks, putting candles on a cake was a special way to pay tribute to the Greek moon goddess, Artemides. They baked round cakes to symbolize the moon. Candles were added to represent the reflected moonlight. Candles on cakes became a popular tradition long ago in Germany, too. For religious reasons, Germans would place a large candle in the center of a cake to symbolize the light of life. Some scholars believe that other meanings have also been attached to the use of candles on cakes. People may have believed that the smoke from the candles carried their wishes and prayers to gods who lived in the skies. Others probably believe the smoke helped to ward off evil spirits. Today, we still put birthday candles on cakes. Many people still hold superstitious beliefs about them too. For example, many people believe that the birthday boy or girl must make a silent wish before blowing out the candles. If all the candles are blown out in one breath, the wish will come true, and the person will have good luck throughout the year. Number three, midsummer tradition, the summer solstice. Otherwise known as midsummer, marks both the longest day and shortest night of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, and is technically the official start of summer. It's also one of Europe's most celebrated and spiritual evenings, which has long been associated with both the Christian St. John the Baptist as well as a more ancient pagan ritual. Sweden is surely the unrivaled champion of midsummer celebrations. Their midsummer stang festivities, marked by the decadent indulgence and rooted in paganism, are some of the more important in the Scandinavian country's calendar, and which unite Swedes of all ages. Traditional foods such as pickled herring, salmon, and potatoes are enjoyed by the flower wreath wearing revelers and maypole and folk dances. It's even said if unmarried girls place seven flowers under their pillow on midsummer, they'll dream of their future husband. According to Sweden's Nordic Museum, midsummer celebrations originally developed from a Christian holiday for John the Baptist, which took place on the 24th of June. Rather than having midsummer always fall on a different day of the week, it was decided in 1953 that it should always be on the Friday between 20th and 26th of June. Though Midsummer itself wasn't celebrated in pagan, pre-Christian times, it's likely there were other ceremonies and celebrations dedicated to the summer solstice. Number 4. Throwing rice at a wedding is a Celtic wedding tradition of throwing rice on the newlyweds is extremely old and predates Christianity. The Celts were not only warriors but also agriculturalists. This tradition symbolized growth 
wealth, and fertility, as well as overall prosperity. Also, the throwing of grain was a pragmatic form of protection. In ancient times, Celts often made offerings to various spirits of place for appeasement, for bounty, and for a favor. There is a widely held belief that malevolent spirits would attend weddings to sap off the energies of the people present. In fact, the same thing is done in many cultures around the world. Like in France, where wedding guests will often throw wheat. Or in Italy, where guests will toss candies and treats at the couple. Number 5. The Tomatina Festival is a festival that is held in the Valencian town of Bunyol, in which participants throw tomatoes and get involved in a tomato fight purely for entertainment purposes. Since 1945, it has been held on the last Wednesday of August. A tomatina was banned in the early 50s. However, this did not stop the participants who were arrested. But the people protested the prohibition and the festivities were again allowed with more participants and increased passions. The festivity was again cancelled till 1957 when as a sign of protest, the tomato burial was held. It was a demonstration in which the residents carried a coffin with a huge tomato inside. The parade was accompanied by a music band which played funeral marches. The protest was successful. La Tomatina Festival was finally permitted and became an official festival. Number 6. Halloween is both a secular and religious holiday. It is celebrated on October 31st. The tradition originated with the ancient Celtic festival Asawin, when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. This day marked the end of summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark cold winter, a time of year that was often associated with human death. In the 8th century, Pope George III designated November 1st as a time to honor all saints. Soon, All Saints Day incorporated some of the traditions of Samhain. The evening before was known as All Hallows Eve, and later Halloween. Over time, Halloween evolved into a day of activities like trick-or-treating, carving jack-o'-lanterns, festive gatherings, donning costumes, and eating treats. Number 7. Love Locks The history of love padlocks dates back to at least 100 years, to a Serbian tale of World War I about two lovers named Nadia and Reja, who broke up after the boy cheated on her with another woman. The other girls in town were understandably protruded by this turn of events, and they quickly moved to ensure their own romantic futures. The women purchased padlocks quickly writing their names and those of their betrothed on the locks before attaching them to the bridge where Nadia and Reja used to meet. Towns all over the world started copying the tradition, but places like Paris, Barcelona, and the rest would eventually be forced to call the locks in order to preserve the bridges, starting the process all over again. Number 8. Cinco de Mayo is an annual celebration held on May 5th. The date is observed to commemorate the Mexican army's victory over the French Empire at the Battle of Puebla on May 5th, 1862, under the leadership of General Ignacio Zaragoza, more popularly celebrated in the United States than in Mexico. The date has been associated with the celebration of Mexican-American culture. These celebrations began in California, where they have been observed annually since 1863. The day gained nationwide popularity in the 1980s, thanks especially to advertising campaigns by beer and wine companies. In Mexico, the commemoration of the battle continues to be mostly ceremonial, such as through military parades or battle reenactments. The city of Puebla marks the event with an arts festival, a festival of local cuisine, and a reenactment of the battle. Number 9. Thanksgiving Day is a national holiday, celebrated on various states in the United States, Canada, some of the Caribbean islands, and Liberia. It began as a day of giving thanks and sacrifice for the blessings of the harvest and of the preceding year. Thanksgiving holiday's history in North America is rooted in English tradition dating from the Protestant Reformation. It also has aspects of a harvest festival, even though the harvest in New England occurs well before the late November date on which the modern Thanksgiving Day is celebrated. The event that Americans commonly call the first Thanksgiving was celebrated by the pilgrims after the first harvest in the New World in October 1621. One of the best things about Thanksgiving is spending time with family. Many people live far from family members and travel long distances by car, train, or plane to be with their loved ones. Thanksgiving is one of the busiest travel days of the year. 
Traditional foods are a large part of Thanksgiving celebrations. Many families include the entire family in food preparation. Traditional foods include turkey, stuffing, gravy, sweet potatoes, cornbread, mashed potatoes, and cranberry sauce. Many people serve pie for dessert at the end of the meal. Thanksgiving is a great time to help out people who might not be as lucky as you. Number 10. Throwing coins into fountains. Millions of people throw coins to the Trevi Fountain in Rome, wishing to find love, money, or anything that they want to happen. It is estimated that people throw $4,000 every day into the Trevi Fountain. The thing is that throwing a coin into the fountain is not a practice observed only at the Trevi Fountain, but also many fountains around the world. Back in the day, people did not have pipes surrounding cities like a spider web to offer them clean water every time they needed it. In some societies, it was even believed that clean water was actually a gift from the gods. Hence, Roman Celts and even Nordic people thought that they had to sacrifice something they considered valuable to the water source in order to keep the gods happy and please them, ensuring the flow of clean water. These small sacrifices and offerings to the gods later came attached with small requests from the believers. They started to ask the gods to cure their illnesses, give them a good harvest, make the boy or girl of their dreams to fall in love with them, or simply find good fortune. Hence, their tradition of throwing coins into fountains and making a wish became a superstition that is still practiced in the 21st century. Some traditions may sound bizarre or strange, yet people hold them close to their hearts and still practice the age-old rituals to this day. Because it's part of their culture and history, it shapes and defines them. In fact, this is what sets one community of humans apart from the other. It is due to their deep-rooted beliefs that these unique customs and rituals are still alive and tie us to the unseen world of the past. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to find out more interesting topics. And as always, thanks for watching.